Okay, and then one more thing um, that they left out of the movie is when Harry and Ron, and it's also Fred and George who stay for like Christmas, Christmas. vacation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and they talk about <laughs> in the book how Fred and George have charmed like snowballs at Quirrell that just keep repeatedly hitting him in the back of the head. So Fred and George unknowingly oh, shit. were pummeling Voldemort's face with <laughs> snowballs. <laughs> That is so funny. It is funny. I feel like we should start by introducing our guest for the day. Yeah. Yeah. Who's not technically always our guest because he's now behind the scenes as our producer. This is James. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? That sums it up and we don't have to spend any more time on it. <laughs> and that is also James. Yeah. Um, yes, he is our producer. He's always behind the camera. And today he's going to be our lovely guest. Well, How are you doing, Jamothy? Very well, thank you. <laughs> are you happy to be here on camera? So happy. So <laughs> excited to be here. Hell yeah. Tell me about your week. Oh, well. Well, first of all, is there anything that you would... <laughs> <laughs> I see that how this great, is going to go. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be fun. Okay. Well. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about you? Would you care to or no? Just yeah, go. I'm 35 years old. I'm six feet tall, about 200 pounds, and I am ready to mingle with this lady. <laughs> I was going to say, damn. Um, okay, so tell me about your week. Do you really want me to tell you about my week? You know, well, tell I, tell the folks out there about your week, or you know anything about you really. I am training for my private pilot's license, so I've spent an extensive period of time waiting for weather to clear this week. It has to no avail. But we live in Los Angeles, isn't it? Always supposed to be sunny all the time and beautiful. Oh boy! <laughs> Apparently, at some point in the day, it will be sunny. Just they like don't a, call it June gloom for nothing. Well, what about January through June? Because it's been gloomy this entire year. True. <laughs> 2023 yeah. gloom. Gloom. June gloom. May gray. July. Bay bay. <laughs> it's going to be hot now. It is hot already. Sheesh. If I start um, sweating, it's because I've been drinking. <laughs> so. Okay. So anyway, um, is, that, is that your week? Is that sum it up? I mean... We went to Ojai. We did. We had some fun in Ojai. That was going to be my sum up of the week, but that's fine. You okay, can that. well, <laughs> you know, we <laughs> spent the week together, so it's, uh, it's probably going to be similar. Uh, it'd be alarming if it wasn't, mm-hmm. but we yeah. went to Ojai. We went to Santa Barbara. Mm-hmm. We spent the weekend with Ollie. Mm-hmm. Ollie's my dog, as all of you, I think, know by now. Full name is Ollivander. Ollivander's incredible. It's relevant. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so yeah. James um, surprised me one day by taking us to like Ojai and Santa Barbara on a little like day trip. It was really it's lovely because we've both been working our ass off in different ways and just constantly. And so we took the day and just had a nice little little day to ourselves, a little yeah. Sunshi- yeah. sunshiny day. That's it was a song. Fun. I enjoyed yep. it. Yep, we did have a bright, 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 sunshiny day. I think I was um, also had a very similar day when you guys had that day. I was uh, trapped in Excel World for the majority of that day. I think I it was stunning. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of budgets. Uh, so, you know, similar in terms of fun. Um, you know what else was sunshiny? Tell them about your mishap. Which one? There's so many. <laughs> guys, oh. I just realized I'm too, I'm too inappropriate to be on this podcast. <laughs> Hone it in, James. <laughs> Um, well, were you going to save it for your confession slash obsession? Well, no, <laughs> it would not be an obsession. I would hope. I'm, I'm s- sincerely curious. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Your injury. Oh, oh, I didn't know I was actually talk- going to talk about oh, that. I thought that was were. towards the end of the pod. We were going to get into that. Um, I, but that's not my confession or obsession. So I'll just say oh, it, it at isn't? the beginning. No, this I, was her sunshiny day. Yeah. Oh, uh, sh- <laughs> it's a couple ways to do it. Well, so I've been really into um, fitness and weightlifting and uh, such as. So, like, and <laughs> such as. <laughs> so I'm, you know, I'm starting to feel really confident in the gym. I get there, I get the the bench out. I'm like, well, I get my weights. I, I don't let the the regulars intimidate me, and I like claim my spot. And I'm like, yeah, I have these like 
you know, they're not super duper heavy, but they are for me. And like, I'm feeling good about it and I'm doing my sets and, uh, I go to, to, to put one down on the bench cause it, it was, it was a heavier set. Um, and I miss the bench and I hit a different bone, um, that is very painful <laughs> and not my leg. Um, her so crotch. I, yeah, I hit my crotch with a, a very heavy weight and, um, the world just kind of started to spin a little bit and I was just like, Oh shit, there's only like three dudes in here. And if I have to like go to the hospital because of like some like pelvic bone injury, I don't know them. They're strangers. And I'd be like, um, guy, I was trying not to look like, <laughs> like embarrassing. Guy, you're trying not to look like? No, it like look embarrassing in front of like, like, you know, I'm feeling empowered in the gym and not have oh, like yeah. that. And I'm like, uh, actually, I used the weights wrong and I need to go to the hospital now. So. We got a bleeder. <laughs> God, I hope my pee pee. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> so luckily that didn't happen. And then a couple of sets later, the guy asked to steal my weights again. And I'm like, like, you know what? No, no. they're mine. <laughs> he had already asked you before. He asked me the time before I saw him in the gym. Oh, like, this uh -oh. guy, we need to find him. All the him. time. And I'm just like, uh, he's this like, gym regular. I have one more set. Bet his name is Jim. <laughs> Spelled with a G. <laughs> Jim. Jim. <laughs> And he was like, I, I want your weights just for one set. And I was like, I also have one more set. And he's like, okay, I'll wait. And I'm like, who yeah. Asks, who asks for your weights for one set? I, it's I, like, hey, I just got one. Let me just <laughs> let me just take them for, I, know. I need them 45 seconds tops. Get the and, fuck away from me. And I had them for like five minutes. It wasn't like I had them for the last 40 minutes and he was getting impatient. I literally had them for five minutes. And he was like, Ugh. Liars. And I'm like, fuck off. Maybe Men. he just wants to talk to you. They always want what us women have. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the feminism podcast. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> if they, I don't know. Men want problems. Oh, well, we have, I have plenty of those. <laughs> exactly. Um, but on a highlight of my week, I also did produce my third in a, a trilogy of music videos. So yeah. just shouting that out for myself. You um, absolutely should. You're killing it. Thank you. You're welcome. Was this the same music video artist that I was also a part yes. of? Oh, that's yeah. right. James. You guys should talk about that. James, what did you play in one of Katrina's music videos? I believe I was a police officer. Oh, damn. You How believe? was that? How was that experience? It was fun. Uh, it was new to me. I'm not normally in front of the camera. Right. Uh, they had me in a very interesting position, contorted, n throat slit, blood everywhere. They're Pretend. Like, yeah. They're like, lay across this box. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, but how do you, like, okay, this way? Like, nah. What's my motivation? <laughs> <laughs> what's my, yeah, what's my, well, you're dead. So, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, this is an empty box. Like, I'm a pretty big boy. Like, I'm going to fall right through this box. And so now I'm playing dead. <laughs> And which, getting which, in an ab workout at the same time. Which also set. requires you to be rather still. <laughs> and this like, box cannot support my weight. So here I am, like a fish, <laughs> splayed out over this box, you trying play, not to crush it. You played a good dead guy, though. <sighs> and that music video comes out soon. That comes out this in the next two weeks. Oh, Ooh. is it not out? Uh, no, they had to re-record the song, but it, it'll come out in a couple weeks. Can you well, say who the artist is or no? Um, yeah. Uh, her name is Marin, um, and she is very popular on Instagram and TikTok for her astrology readings. Oh, um, I but did not she know that. is transitioning into music, and she just released uh, her first music video uh, a couple weeks ago, and her EP is dropping uh, next month, I believe. And so we've done a, a few music videos leading up to the EP release. Hell great yeah. gal, great gal. <laughs> she, no, she's so nice. Like, Loves the color red. She does. That is her signature color. Huh, cool. I can't wait to see them. Yeah. She was You've nice. Can we talk about who our other co-star was, our other I don't, background? I don't know if we're allowed to. Shoot. Not till it drops. There was a celebrity on the, yeah, as part of the cast. Yeah, and he was so nice. And he, he was. actually was a very, he was so, he was trying to get into the method acting a lot. And he was actually like, what's my motivation for being on the phone? And, and it was so cute. It was just it was perfect. Like he was really into it and he was so excited. And that makes it so much like more fun to be on set with someone. Didn't he like, he like researched like, were, yeah. what his role might. Yeah. 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 That's really here's sweet. Like for thing. a music video where you have no lines. Yeah. yeah well, here's the thing. He was super into it. He was uh, interested and across from me, a guy who's, I mean, let's be honest, doing a favor here. 
right? Yes. I'm not an actor. I don't claim to be. It's not easy. <laughs> Definitely not my thing. You see how awkward I am right now in front of a camera. But uh, standing there with a straight face watching someone else who's attempting to be in the acting world, he, like, he wants to like transition potentially into that space, asking all these questions. And I'm just thinking to me, so, like, I'm like, whoa, this guy's really into this. Yeah, and he's I'm going just above like, and beyond. And yeah. I'm like, I'm going to go lay over a box <laughs> and then maybe get lunch. <laughs> but you, you know? did great. And you helped me out a lot on that shoot. So snaps all around. I can't really think of anything else that I've been doing other than choreography. That's like a lot of morning walks, a lot of choreography. You have been. Uh, oh, something else. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I didn't mean to cut you off. Something else that we've been doing. James and I have read this entire book, except for the last chapter. We didn't get to it. We meant to get to it today before recording. We so didn't. How will you know how it ends? Well, <laughs> funny you should ask. I'll never know. Um, because we've watched the movie. And um, <laughs> I've also read this about six other times. Uh, and by her saying she's watched the movie, I... <laughs> I've been living with her for a year and a half-ish, maybe. Um, and I can, at least 10 to 15 times, I know she's watched the first Harry Potter. Not like all of the different movies have been included in that number. She'll go and be like, oh, I started watching Harry Potter again. And I'm like, oh, a different one? She's like, no, Sorcerer's Stone again. <laughs> and I'm just like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I've probably watched Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone or Philosopher's Stone, for those of our British listeners. Um, probably more times than anyone in the history of the world. Oh, yeah. I more don't know why the, they would change it. More than the editor working on it. You've probably logged more hours <laughs> watching that. Probably. I just love it because of the whimsy and mm -hmm. the, like, childlike wonder mm -hmm. of it. Whereas, like, you know, the other movies, I feel like the second one... Still also has that, still the same director, still like the younger stages of the series, but it's the first one that has all the like establishing world building yeah. mm -hmm. like shots. I don't know. It's just like the most nostalgic to me. Can you yeah, guess why is. I avoid the second one normally? Spider. <laughs> so many fucking spiders. <laughs> Jeez, I think spiders. there's some big ones in there. There's too. some huge ones in there. And this is a little side story. I used to go to the Universal uh, Park with a uh, someone uh, a lot and I was trying to Damn. <laughs> tell us about that huh I used to go to Universal a lot and I was trying to go on this ride and enjoy it but there's this huge spider scene in it and it's like right up in your face so I would be like okay hold my hand and let go of my hand once the spider is gone because I was trying to get it down so I couldn't start enjoying this ride I just closed your eyes but because I didn't know when it was over like, I knew, mm. like, going into the forest, that's when I closed my eyes, and then the hand release was supposed to let me know. <laughs> Choreography. <laughs> uh, is this the Harry Potter ride? Yeah. The, oh, I yeah. was thinking it was the mummy. No, no, it's the Harry Potter one. Because there's bugs and they spray oh, the Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. Oh, you're just... You're, it's literally just prejudiced spiders. Prejudiced to just eight-legged creatures. Yes, just eight-legged, eight-eyed creatures. And um, we just never were in sync. And Arachnophobic, the hand, yes, they call it. Yes, very much, very much. And uh, the hand thing never worked. So I always end up missing, and I'd be like, it has to be done by now. And then I would just open my eyes. Sounds like a win-win, because now you got a guy holding your hand. So it's like, you know, at least you know he likes you. <laughs> well, it's me, so <laughs> it's physical contact. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> so needless to say, we're talking about Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone today. Oh, yeah. And I'm wearing platform nine and three quarters. Also, Gryffindor colors, because I am shockingly a Gryffindor. And um, tell us about your house. Well, I'm Slytherin all the way. I even have a snake ring on um it's just because i find them more fun at my <laughs> core i feel like i'm i don't know like they're they're supposed to be cunning Racist. and intelligent just, <laughs> just joking <laughs> no, disclaimer not completely they are <laughs> they are yeah. Well, in the movie. They are in the movie. Yeah. Um no but like their whole thing is that they're like intelligent and cunning and um uh, persistent and like resilient and I feel like assholes yeah you know, well I'm all those things yeah. um but at my core I'm nice but only to a select few uh, yada 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 I, I, I'm pretty much a Slytherin I would like to say well now hold on let me ask you a question about this because I think Malfoy is those things I think maybe Snape is those things mm -hmm. but I think Crabbe and Goyle are pretty stupid 
Well, after, while she was building this world, I feel like it, it did tend to get a little sloppy with the secondary characters where it was like, okay, so they're evil, so they have to go to Slytherin because you, you can't put them in a Hufflepuff. Like, there's no evil person that's a Hufflepuff. Um, so Damn. <laughs> I'd be pretty aggressive if I got put there. I'll say that. Doesn't Draco have a line about that? He was like, I think it's in the book, actually, when Draco's like, I hope I'm not in Hufflepuff. I'd rather just not go than be in Hufflepuff. Well, and that's fair. <laughs> Well, this is a great opportunity for to tell you guys I'm an I'm a Hufflepuff. You are not. <laughs> no, I'm not. What house are you representing today? Apparently, Dumbledore's beard. Yeah, is what I was told <laughs> before Dumbledore. walking in here. But yeah, the we first do have Dumbledore, the good, the good Dumbledore. <laughs> yeah, Richard Harris. Um, actually, I have I know this isn't like fun fact time, but speaking of Richard Harris, who I love so dearly, um, like I know hot take, you know about actors playing Dumbledore, um. But I will say I loved Richard Harris's whimsy because it was way more spot on with like book Dumbledore um, because he's so like cheeky and like always says things with like a wink and doesn't take things too seriously, really, um, except for the things that like should be taken really seriously, you know? But it also feels like he has it like a wisdom that he doesn't have to prove. Exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? I mean, granted, I think he was like too old and fragile to then really pull off like the end of the series if he were alive. Well, maybe so. <laughs> Proven by the fact that he died. <laughs> well, right, but I'm just saying. Like, but, you know, he's in the great beyond and he's thinking about it. Yeah, but the, uh, the other Dumbledore I felt like was way too like – trying to prove his like power and yeah stuff. i mean there's obviously a couple of scenes where he gets a little little wild he loses <laughs> Did you put your name in the go- i mean that's the different movie but <laughs> he loses you know. his whimsy he yeah. can't control himself and he doesn't really have much whimsy he's yeah he's kind of aggressive and entitled yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah. do do you know when uh the movie of harry potter and the sorcerer's stone was released what book they were on at that point was it four or five that had just been released well, maybe not even, because the movie came out in 2001, and the first book was released in 98, so they were probably only on, like, the third or fourth book. I want to look this up. Yeah, that's a good question. It's one that I don't have the answer to so being... So, the movie was 2001? Yes. Because um, what I'm thinking of while you're looking that up is that J.K. Rowling knew that it was going to get much darker as these movies and books went on. So, she killed him off? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but she knew that they could go with a like a less endearing version of Dumbledore because she knew how the story was going to end where no one else did. I guess so, I see where you're going with that, but I feel like having just read the book also mm-hmm. that that just like lends itself even more to like the magic of the original character. Yes. So it was Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire that came out in 2001. Okay. So so that's the fourth for anyone not keeping track at home. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, interesting. So, none of that was my fact that I was about to say. Sorry. No, it's okay. Um, but I was going to say that um, I was reading something about Richard Harris. And, you know, again, he was really old. And I found this fact that says, Richard Harris had trouble remembering his lines. And Daniel Radcliffe would ask him to help with running his lines just to give Harris more practice. Sweet. Aww. That is so sweet. And that's why he's cast as Harry. You know? Yeah. And that's a Gryffindor's trait. That is. Yeah. Oh, gosh, I love it. So as we all know, we're talking about Harry Potter 1. And this was just a huge cultural phenomenon, like surpassing it just being a movie, as many of you should know. Um, but becoming an eight, but, but more than becoming an eight-part series, this impacted almost every facet of culture from and I was in elementary school when it came out so I just don't have a memory of childhood where someone wasn't talking about Harry Potter in like one way or another so I I I know we're going to talk about that later on but it's just really fun to keep in mind that this is not just a movie or a book we're talking about this is a lifestyle it's a lifestyle (laughs) well you know what I love right along the lines of that topic I guess um in the book and in the movie um one of the very first scenes is when they're dropping baby Harry on the Dursley's doorstep and McGonagall says this boy will be famous everyone will know his name Mm -hmm. and it's like what a like kind of double entendre if you will (laughs) you know because like yes everyone in the book knew his name but like Mm -hmm. so does everyone in the world yeah you know I just love who lived the boy who lived yeah but uh, everyone was going to know his name without him doing anything. 
right? Yeah, That's I the guess. Point. Yeah, like yeah. Just for surviving, everyone mm-hmm. would have known his name, even if he never went to Hogwarts. Yeah, as Hermione says in the book, like she read about him before even meeting him right. because he was in like these. He was in the know, cupboard. Modern. He was in the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> he was in these modern <laughs> historical books as the only person to have ever lived, you know, through the killing curse. Um, and one funny thing, so we just read the book, so we have some, like, fresh knowledge of, like, book versus movie situations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, in the book, it actually opens with a full day following Uncle Vernon throughout his boring-ass work day. Like, that's yep. how the book opens. No Is wonder they cut it. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, following him, and it's, like, you know, the Dursleys were super normal. Thank you very much. And then it's, were like... Were they? Yeah, and then it's like him. I don't know that they were driving no, like It's like, <laughs> like him driving to work at his drill company, and him seeing all a these cat like reading a he newspaper. He sees he sees a cat. He sees um, all these like weirdos dressed in robes, and it's interesting because the color for like pretty much the entire book, anything that's wizard ish is purple or green. Like, every single thing is purple or green. Almost always. In regards to... Cloaks. Like, yeah, yeah, in regards to, like, representing the wizarding world. Like, Is it cloaks, like, eye colors? Yes, like, yeah. all kinds of things. Yeah, like... Oh, that's interesting. Uncle Vernon sees, like, a weirdo dressed in a purple robe, and then an another weirdo... Cap. Yeah, Yeah, another weirdo with an emerald cap, and then... Um, McGonagall is an emerald robe, and then well, Dumbledore. But there's like five different types of descriptions. To it's of crazy, green. repeatedly purple and. But emerald. he does know about wizards. Like he, does. he knows that they exist, right? So you would think, like, oh shit, this boy that I'm housing uh, and, and trying to like stomp the magic out of, right? <laughs> like it wouldn't be a weird like jump to be like, oh, all of these wizards are around. Like you know, one plus one equals two usually. Yeah, like, right. But Im- he's an idiot. But does that mm. imply that this is like? more than normal at that point no i just feel like he shouldn't be like freaked out like who are these yeah like he shouldn't how many days do you have to walk up past right a few wizards to then not notice them anymore yeah yeah a cat reading a newspaper that's something you notice yeah Yeah. was that what happened yeah 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 and looking at the sign like reading a sign i only see that like once or twice a month right yeah typically Mm -hmm. i would say yeah i don't look at cats anymore (laughs) And Not in the personal. eyes, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one note that I have about when you and I were watching the movie is, you know, okay, jump forward a little bit more till um, Harry's like a, almost 11 now and he's getting all the letters and <laughs> owls are showing up. And James just keeps saying, what beautiful owls. Oh, yeah, stunning owls. It's beautiful owls. And if you've never <laughs> seen an owl before, there's lots of different kinds and they are all pretty wonderful to look at. He loved the owls. Just saying. Um, that's the only note pretty. I have about you watching the movie. Well, that's weird. <laughs> I don't. Wait, so James, you self-centered. Never read the books before, right? I've read the first book. Okay, and have you watched all the movies? Over some period of time, I've watched the movies, but it's not all of them. You haven't watched all the movies. I feel like I've watched most. If I haven't watched all of them, I've watched most of them, and I have seen the last one. Hmm. Okay, okay, so you know where this goes. I eventually. know where it Not goes. entirely, though, because there are a couple I things. I don't know anything. While we were reading <laughs> the first one, and I was like, oh, my God, I didn't realize that it mentions this so soon. Mm. And he was like, what? Oh. So. Well, first of all, the thought that I was going to be on the same level as you <laughs> of, like, remembering details of Harry Potter is crazy, okay? No one can be. Let's just yeah. put it that way. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so another um, flash forward to, you know, the Dursleys have become, like, so afraid of all the letters and stuff that they have moved to this, like, wait, hut wait, wait, on a rock. Wait, one more thing yeah. I want to bring up before we get into all that. Uh, Dudley kicking his mom down the street for sweets when he was a year old. Yeah, that was a weird description. We, that was in the book, yeah. Can we figure that out a little bit here? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Katrina, do you know? He kicked his mom down the street? That is a strong one-year-old. I, no. That's what I'm saying. Why is he like, he's walking down the street fussing and kicking his mother for sweets, I think is what was going on. Yeah, I don't think he kicked his and mom. It's like, well, but, but, but hold on. But hold on. He, well, he was having a fit. He was having a fit. saw the mom rolling down the street. No, I think she was probably holding him, maybe walking, oh, and he's fucking kidding, so kicking her. So not the description it's, that first popped up to Here's the, the thing. We have one scene where a baby is being swaddled and dropped off on a doorstep and right. then another boy of the same age 
is being described as kicking his mother <laughs> and having a tantrum walking down the street for sweets. I'm confused. Well, okay, I will say that um, Harry was over one year old when, like, the whole thing happened where his parents died. The casting for the baby mm, that they dropped maybe that's off where my issue is. was confusing mm. because it's not a like newborn baby. Like it kind of looks like yeah. in the movie. It's, yeah, exactly. Okay. It's like a one and a half year old. They should have put him in a little crate, you know. A Wonder. little with like a name tag and a description and like a one point five years old. Well, he has, his mo- he has his mother. <laughs> he has his mother's eyes. He doesn't. Need, That's all you need. That's all you need. need and now it's time for an ad break. Quick little ad break here. This episode is brought to you by Mastermind Media. Mastermind Media, they do so many things. They are your partner to the digital world. They do social media management, podcasts, branding, and so much more. And now, back to the episode. Um, okay, so anyway, they, the Dursleys have gone to like this, you know, shack on the rock in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> and in the book, they actually go to several different like hideouts that they're still reached at. Is this before the zoo or after the zoo? This is after the after zoo. The zoo. Just, oh, we had something to say about the zoo. We did have something to say about Brazil, I think, in the zoo. Yeah, I will say, I, I wrote <laughs> this down too. Um, I just must have. Oh, it must be it. lost in your f- flurry of notes. Um, Six I, I, pages I just, long. I just wrote down that a line that they did change for the better. Actually, there are several. It was for the better. There are several of these throughout like the book versus movie adaptation. In the book, after the snake gets released out of the cage, his line is, Thanks, amigo. Oh. Brazil, here I come. <laughs> yeah, because just prior to that, he's like, Where are you from? Yeah. He points or gestures over to a sign that says, I'm a Brazilian Raised in captivity. Boa constrictor. And then it's like, oh, how's Brazil? Never been there. Raised in this little terrarium. Yeah, which they do hit on in the movie, but the line is just different in the movie. For the better, though. Uh, No, I want thanks, amigo. Here I come Brazil (laughs) back. And I might start incorporating that into my daily life. Thanks, I don't know. I think you're you're probably thinking of some sort of exotic rum or maybe a tequila. (laughs) Yes, I always am. (laughs) Maybe banana flavor. Ooh. I have stunning. Hit that button. Okay, so what oh um hit that button. Oh ooh. ooh. Okay, <laughs> so um now they're finally at the shack on the rock thing. And um I will say they in the book they go to a bunch of different locations. Mail is still getting to them, so this is like the last resort situation, which was smart of them to just cut to in the movie. Agreed. Um, but you know, in the book, there are a couple things that I was like, actually, this didn't really make that much sense. Um, and the movie did it better again. Um, so when Hagrid comes in and he's like, he thinks Dudley is Harry. In the book, he just like knows who Harry is out of the two, mm, mm-hmm. which doesn't really make sense because he hasn't seen him since he was a baby. Um, so I like the addition of like, I- I'm not Harry, which. Fun fact, that actor's name is actually Harry. Yeah. Oh, so interesting. A, yeah, so that's funny. And that's the level that I will never get to. <laughs> um, but also, Hagrid, you know, turns, you know, puts a little pigtail on him, right? Mm-hmm. So in the book, um, <laughs> it just happens randomly. It's just out of, like, spite because of the Uncle Vernon, Hagrid, you know, fight that breaks out, you know, or their argument. Yeah, here's um, a little fat boy. Let's put a pigtail on him. Yeah, he doesn't eat the cake, which is, like, the reason why he puts mm-hmm. a pigtail on him in the movie, which I feel like was a better choice. Like, yeah. that's that makes a little bit more sense. I loved the I, awkwardness of him grabbing a cake, sneaking <laughs> off into a corner, and just bending over. and s- It almost looked like a, a dog that shouldn't be eating something. Oh, okay. yeah. That's gotten into a treat like and he's... Leave it. I think yeah. about that cake probably once a month. Just <laughs> like, oh, because it looks so cute. Like, and it's an endearing thing. Like, he made him this little cake and it's all like, ugh. but it's still like made out of love. And he's like, and Harry Potter's just like so ecstatic to get it. Cause like no one's ever done that for him before. Yeah. And just like the whole little scene, I'm like, I want that cake. Hagrid is such a wonderful character. Also mm-hmm. like skipping forward, but it turns out that he wrote um, Harry letters like his first week at school simply because he knew that other kids would be getting letters from their family. Right. And oh, yeah. he knew that Harry wouldn't. So he didn't he want like, him to feel left out. Yeah, which is so sweet. And got him gifts on yeah, Christmas. Yeah, so sweet. The, yeah, that's like the flute, the wooden flute that he 
carved hmm. himself. That turned out to be kind of valuable later. Yeah. yeah. Um, so also speaking of Hagrid, we were talking about a little bit of movie making magic. And this is something that I wanted to talk to you about because I think you would appreciate it. Um, we noticed while we were watching this movie that they only show Hagrid's face close up, which is like head and shoulders. And it's always like from not, Harry's eye line. Well, yeah, and not relating to anything else. There's nothing really next to him that mm -hmm. shows size. Or okay? proportion, yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. And then the only time they ever show Hagrid's full body in proportion to other things like Harry, the set, etc., right. his face is not seen. Yeah, his that makes hair sense. is covering everything, or he's, it's from or the he's back. Or he's from the back, or it's a shadow. I've so never noticed that before, but that makes <clears> so <throat> much movie making sense. To yes. Do. Yeah, so everything's think, a wide. Yeah. We think that they had like a stand in that was probably like way bigger than Robbie Coltrane mm -hmm. um, for those like wide shots. There's a moment where he blasts um, the tail. fire. Oh, I thought it. Oh, yes. It the pigtail. Pig yep, with his pink umbrella. And you actually caught it. You, you paused the movie and you're like, yeah. that's oh, what not is his this? face. And sure oh, enough, when that yeah, happens. yeah. So a little um, <laughs> tip for y'all. Also back in 2001 where now I'm sure they would just CGI his face onto that point. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. but it's also like, oh, it was a quick second. Yeah, no, you know? definitely. And then they're like, we can get away with it. Right. But I think that happens often it in does. this series. Anyway. Yeah. 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 It's clever though. I mean, I love that. I love the kind of like more crafty movie making strategy especially for number one in this when they didn't know if it was going to be exactly, exactly that's what the thing it it's be. like yeah. oh, well we're not going to spend the time and wait, you know put all that effort in because it might just be yeah it might not be received at all yeah. right don't right know. exactly so yeah why bother so, but in that like six seven movie or whatever five six movie they need to get better <laughs> yeah, There's yeah. There's some things yeah. that are a little questionable. Well, yeah, there is. I mean, um, maybe we'll do it on the pod at some point, but in Prisoner of Azkaban, there is a clear shot. It is a wide shot, granted, but it's in the hippogriff scene <sighs> where it is straight up not Daniel Radcliffe and Robbie Coltrane that you see. It's like a panning moment where it, it's like right before you see Draco coming forward. Yep. Two different actors. They were probably the stand ins, and it is not that. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. Yeah, and the, the face shape of Hagrid is completely different. Yeah. For his well, and then same with, so this was interesting, um, the scene where it's Hagrid and Harry sitting at the Leaky Cauldron after Diagon Alley, you see Diagonally. Harry's... Diagonally. Diagonally. Um, you see Harry's profile, and I'm like, that's not Harry. Yeah, that's he's got him. more of a... It's like a, yeah, chub your cheeks head. and stuff. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. Also, because of course they would focus on... Daniel Radcliffe's close-ups because kids' hours on set are yeah. so much shorter. Yeah, that makes so I'm sense sure too. they would get stand-ins, you know, for the purpose of you know the adults' close-ups. Right. Interesting. Mm -hmm. When they were cast, they were what, 11? Mm -hmm. 10 11? They yeah. look so young. They look so young. So little. So I think they got six hours per mm -hmm. day on set is the the like the max for kids at that age. And then still had to do all of their schooling also. On set. On set. Yeah. And so also within that, all of the like classroom scenes, they were all always doing their actual homework <laughs> to like make the most out of the hours. Which is actually so smart to do. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Do you Method think, acting. Do you think Hermione was the best. At what? At school. Yeah. yeah. I feel like Even they were still? all. She's talked about that. They're all cast oh, very similar to their characters. Like, I think because they're kid actors, and it was pretty much the first thing that all of them did, mm -hmm. I think that's how you draw inspiration as a kid. That's what I would do. Like, this is who I am. This character is similar yeah. to who I am. And, like, that's how you I feel like you would get a part at that age. So yeah. I think that resonated really well. And then gave them the longevity to be in those characters for 10 freaking years. Like. Yeah, well, even, like, um, Emma Watson has said that she knew everyone's lines. And in some scenes, uh, you can actually see her, like, mouthing. mouthing. No yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. So it's like she was... She also got a little wild with a crimper. <laughs> yeah. There see. are a couple of scenes where her hair is, you know, every movie, they're trying to make her hair, like, frizzy and curly. And this one, it's the crimper. Yeah. And in, in, the second, in the second one, it's, like, a thicker crimp. It's, mm. like, they just, like... Had her brighter hair. She's like, oh boy. Looks yeah. a little like Ollie's hair, honestly. Oh, a, little yeah, a little cramp. A little cramp. Who's your guys' favorite characters? Oh. Specifically in this, let's say this let's movie. Let's say this movie. Sorcerer's Stone. Coral. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the way he talks. It's so sexy. <laughs> the guy on the back of him that smells like garlic. Oh, man. I uh, don't know. I'm, I'm honestly like, I'm it's honestly. It's a cop out to say Harry, right? Okay. So. Yes, yes but and no, because mine's not. Yeah, I, oh, are you going to say Harry? No, no. I'm, I'm going to say, like, 
that wasn't my obvious choice. Uh, so I don't think it's a cop out if that is your choice. No, it's not my choice. I would have a really hard time deciding between like the trio, honestly, like in their own ways. I think like for me, Harry is so pure and a really good little actor. Like I said that a couple times 100%. when we were watching the all, movie. All of them were. His reactions are so good and like you know, nuanced. And then Ron is just so Ron's great too. Ron's know, so Ron <laughs> and his facial expressions yeah, and facial expressions his energy is wonderful. And then Hermione had so many like pretty iconic lines from this movie. Yeah. So I, I, I honestly can't really, pick are one. we discussing from the three? No, no, mine's Snape. Oh, okay. Snape is great. I just, I just love his character, like in how his arc eventually, but even just in this movie and he's just kind of like, Every movie kind of needs that asshole, especially from the kids' perspective. Like, when you go back and look at it, like, the kids were being kind of annoying. So he was trying to give them some, like, t he went extreme. And, like, you can definitely tell there's a grudge against Harry. But, like. He but it turns out there's not, right? Like, it's not a grudge. I mean, it's small. Like, there is. is a little bit. He's just being hard on him to get the best out of him. Well, no. No? no? This is what I'm saying. Yeah. He doesn't know at all. There's, there's a bit of a Spoilers. grudge there. He doesn't. Like, in the long term, he doesn't want anything bad to happen to him, but there right. is, like, a grudge there. Well, hold on. Aside from this. <laughs> you, he, there are story arcs later on where he protects him. Yeah. Yes. He doesn't then, want him to die. But there yeah, is a grudge. Like, he's like, oh, you'll help Malfoy do right. whatever he needs to do. And it's like he doesn't. Yeah. Right? He does. Yeah. He helps him? Yeah. But he doesn't. I don't know. I guess I'm lost on that. But It's okay. Um, anyways, it makes sense that you would like Snape. I feel he's a really yeah. great character. And um, I know I talked to you about this, but and I think this is like pretty common knowledge at this point. But I just love the fact that, you know, J.K. Rowling was so planned out as far as this whole series goes that, you know, she had that talk with Snape or yeah. Alan Rickman yeah. before yeah, he. That. Yeah. Before he started filming, knowing his whole character arc so that he could inform his character right. to the best of his abilities. I think that was like. So brilliant. Yeah. Um, and then one more thing about Snape. And again, I feel like this is like not like super deep knowledge, but um, I don't know if you noticed that the first thing that he ever says to Harry is, I have to look it up. Oh, do you? Yeah. What? It's, um, it's weird words. Oh, okay. <laughs> is it, I love you. <laughs> Cause those are weird words to me. Well, for me. <laughs> it says, okay. So the first thing Snape asks Harry is, what would I get if I added powdered root of asphodel to an infusion of wormwood? Oh, and yes. that, according to Victorian flower language, um, asphodel is a type of lily, meaning my regrets follow you to the grave. Also, Harry's mom, Lily. Yep. And wormwood means absence and also typically symbolizes bitter sorrow. Mm. That's so, wild that you picked that up. That I've actually I, heard. That, I've heard that. Yeah. I, that's not oh, an original okay. thought for me. I've heard that before. But everything is just so plotted. Like it's it just, it's brilliant. Yeah. that's why I love it so much. Wait, are we? Are we? Did you give your character? I just couldn't decide. Oh yeah, no. you didn't yet. I didn't give. Um, okay. So I just said I couldn't for decide. Me, out of for the three. me, it's it uh, probably is Dumbledore in this movie. Mm, yeah, oh, okay. that's a great one. Represent. I think my second Weird. favorite would be Ron, just because he's like such a great friend. Ron like, is a close like second for me. Great supporting, like always there for Harry, and it's just invaluable to the the whole story. Like, yeah, yeah. really it's, the whole series. Like, yeah. and especially because you know when he sees himself in the mirror of Irisad, he's you know the Quidditch captain and head boy, and you know kind of like such a funny center, line. Center of, boy. Yeah, center of <laughs> attention, kind of hotshot guy. And he goes throughout his whole life with him being, you know, Harry's shadow. Like, yeah. Harry gets all of that, and he doesn't. And that would be really hard as, like, a teenager, essentially, in most of the series, to have your best friend be, like, the most famous person, and you're, like, the sidekick when you want that spotlight. Right. Ron gets... He does. Something he wants he to. He does. Like, but the journey is, I, I don't the, think no, it's like it's as. not apples to apples at all. But like, yeah, it's not like he gets nothing in the end. Like Joey no. from Friends where it's <laughs> like, well, sorry. <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah. No, I'm just saying that like that, what a, what a struggle for years. Oh, definitely. You know, but he's still so loyal and supportive despite all of that. Yeah. So. But I think he likes the adventure. 
Oh, for sure. Definitely. For sure. Yeah. yeah. He's out yeah. there getting bit by dragons. Yeah. Yeah. He is. Well, that was a huge, you know, difference from the book too. Whereas, um, you know, in the movie, uh, the detention is Harry and Draco and then Hermione and Ron. Yeah. And then Hagrid and Fang. Um, in the book, it's actually Neville. Instead of Ron. Oh, because, that's completely different. Yeah, because oh, Ron remember. um got bitten by Norbert and he was in the hospital wing, didn't want to tell Madame Pomfrey that it was a dragon bite because he didn't want to like, you know, get questions regarding the dragon since right. those are illegal. Right. So she can't treat him because she thinks it's a dog bite. And that's why he's in there for so long. And um there's this whole like scene that isn't in the movie at all where um it's mentioned, but you know, um it's Harry and Hermione who have been sending letters to Charlie with Ron. Um, they have this whole plan with Charlie Weasley, who, you know, tames dragons in Romania. Mm -hmm. And they have this whole plan where Charlie and his friends from Romania are going to meet um, Harry and Hermione and Norbert at the tallest tower in Hogwarts um, in order for them to send off Norbert in this, like, cage contraption that Charlie has brought. And Neville comes because he has heard that Malfoy heard about this plan Malfoy's come to like tell on them Neville gets caught by McGonagall trying to warn Harry and Hermione about this about Malfoy so he gets caught too okay. um well I was just going back to like why it was so culturally impactful which mm -hmm. is a mouthful apparently for me to say um but why we are still talking about this movie slash book uh, 22 years later um currently so Harry Potter Jesus it's been uh, that long yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. whoa Basically, character develop, development, um, magic, plotting, world mysteries, building. Like That's what I, all of that. Yeah, mystery and the like whimsy of the yeah. world. Which is why kids resonated with it and then why their parents or just older kids or just parents and, or not even parents, just people in general really gravitated towards this book. It was on like all of these reading, like kids really, really wanted to read it. Like it was almost like they... We're trying to ban this book. It was actually they did oh, yeah. really? in some places. They did. Yeah, it was yeah. on the why uh, because of all the witchcraft. witchcraft. Yeah, it was a big banned book. It was a big banned book of, in one of the years. It, it was on the highest like. There's a list of like banned books, and it reached the top of that. This is crazy. Talk yeah. about the publicity like high though. Because, oh yeah. Oh, you're gonna ban a book, so then I'm gonna read gonna it. Try to read it. That's, yeah. That's this is the, the original thing. viral. And that's right. why I wrote that in my notes. This went viral before viral was a thing. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. it just caught on so aggressively. It became this overnight, probably not overnight, but, like, overnight sensation that by the time the second movie came out and then the fifth book, and they were, like, in, they weren't in sync because the books were a little bit ahead, but then there was already, it was generating its own buzz Yeah, for, like, the movie well, and then the books. When was this released? The 98? book, 98. So, I was, a, I was 11. Wow. Harry's age. Aww. I was 11 You're years Harry, old. Are you Harry Potter? Never <laughs> claimed to be. I don't have the, the magic or the whimsy. Um, you have the whimsy. But uh, that's, it's like something that I knew about, and I don't know why. I don't know how I found out about it. But I, How could you not? All of us, yeah. and like me and my friends, did want to read it. Yeah. Even yeah. then. Yeah. But how the heck did we know about it? Right. Yeah, it's not like we had like social media or yeah. like read the news. What was the deal? Paper or anything. And then my parents, they let me out of school early um, to see the the day it came out, the third one, Prisoner of Azkaban. And I just thought it was the coolest. I was like, I get to leave early to go see this movie. I think I told people I was sick or something. Like, I like, it was very intricate. And came was, up with a backstory? I did. Because like, <laughs> I went to a tiny little Lutheran uh, elementary school. They weren't going to let me out to go see a witchcraft movie. They let you out. Your parents are like, You're, she's coming out. I know, but it, it was, they would have given us like How shit old for were it. you? Um... Probably like 11. So 2001. No, her prisoner of basketball. Oh, sorry. Which sorry, is my sorry. favorite one. Yeah, it's a great by one. By the way. Um, I, that was probably like 2004. Um, yeah, yeah. Probably. So I was graduating high 12. school. 12. Getting ready. <laughs> but so I'm just, I remember where I was when I saw that movie. I remember mm -hmm. going to the midnight releases for the ones after that. Midnight, you're 11. No, for the oh, ones after, after that. Um, For the book seven movies, seven and eight, I was there at the midnight screening, which I'm really sad that they don't do anymore. I get why they don't do them anymore, but yeah. I used to love a midnight screening. Why don't and they do them anymore? There's no reason. You can pre-reserve seats like for all of your movie theaters. It'll be on streaming in two months. Like that buzz just isn't there anymore. And then people like 
just wanted to know before everyone else could spoil it like what was gonna happen yeah in these that movies. was yeah that was me for sure that so there whole... was lines wrapped around everyone was dressed up we were really cool um but like it was just you would just be in purple and green <laughs> and such weirdos and you'd be standing there for four hours in line waiting to go see this movie with your friends with my friends yeah that sounds fun and it, it was and that's why i miss it nothing like standing around with your friends with nothing to do <laughs> you know waiting ah uh, nostalgia then they decide to have a podcast and here we are <laughs> <laughs> okay a couple more notes about the book versus um yep. movie um one thing that i wish was in the movie there is a quidditch game too which i get, we got enough quidditch you know and in, in the movie i will say we but, need a quidditch yeah <laughs> um <laughs> what i what i missed out on and i totally forgot about this is there's a quidditch game too where Snape is the referee. And I think that oh, is just yeah. a hilarious visual. Snape riding around on a broom with a whistle or something. Would he have to wear something different? I would hope that he had to wear the black and white uniform. Oh, the, wait, was God. there ever uh, like a de depiction of a ref? Yeah. Yeah, Madam and Hooch. What, Madam Hooch. But she, she taught them how to ride, but was she, no, what she's was she in the wearing? Game. Was she wearing white, white and black? And, yeah, stripes. Like zebra stripes? Yeah. No, like a referee. She definitely was. Was she? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll have to I believe you that. because she's got the best memory for sure. She has a really good memory. <laughs> um, Okay, and then but that what, would be funny to see Snape dressed as that. <laughs> I think it was so funny. Like, how can you play like mean and serious? Like when you're like, like dad right. shorts on. Like, I know. <laughs> oh, yeah, he'd be pale. You know, we he got has a to little wear, sneak like, a peek. headband <laughs> to get his hair out of his face. We got a little sneak peek at that leg with that <laughs> dog bite. That's so true. But. Um, okay, and then one more thing um, that they left out of the movie is when Harry and Ron, and it's also Fred and George who stay for like Christmas, Christmas. vacation. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they talk about <laughs> in the book how Fred and George have like um, charmed Quirrell um, or charmed like snowballs at Quirrell that just keep repeatedly hitting him in the back of the head. So Fred and George unknowingly oh, were pummeling Voldemort's face with <laughs> snowballs. I think that is so funny. It is funny. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> two, fun two scenes I just wish were in there. But otherwise, they they yeah, stay almost a like 100% true to the book, I would say. What do you think your most quoted line from this movie is? Anything from the trolley? <laughs> just kidding. Um, <laughs> we'll take the law. <laughs> uh, I think mine's a basic one that pretty <clears throat> much everyone says, but Leviosa, not Leviosa. And I do that. When you it, didn't even do it right. It's Leviosa, not, not Leviosa. Leviosa but like, wrong. I do it with no content, no correlation. I'm oh. just like, I'll do it with like something that someone did wrong and I'll be like, it's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Uh, again, I don't I'm even- still not doing it right. No, I know. It's okay. I know I'm not doing it right, but people get the reference. Yeah, That's I understand. Like, that is, a, that is a, a pretty hmm. easy one to pick. I mm -hmm. think for me, it was when Neville was threatening to fight them. I'll, I'll fight, fight you. I'll, I'll fight you. <laughs> he had I'm no- really, really He did not want this. to do it, but he was really trying his best. He was hmm. so sweet. I don't know if I have a quote from this one. That's okay. Hmm, sorry. What about uh, the garlic smell around Quirrell? Did yeah, that's a weird thing. Yeah, I don't know. They don't really talk about they, that. Oh, in the movie they didn't, right? No. But in the book they say he smells like garlic or it's around his classroom or something. And yeah. And also they suspect it's in his turban. Yeah. But does Voldemort just stink like garlic? <laughs> oh, maybe. Damn. Like, <laughs> well, he's a on? rotting half of a corpse, so he probably doesn't it's, smell great. It's possible but he has a garlic smells wonderful. <laughs> well, they probably uh, like... Wait. They, well, I'm saying they probably... <laughs> I don't know about that. I think about it. Maybe they wore something like garlic. <laughs> he's Italian. <laughs> <laughs> so that they didn't notice the rotting stench of person. Like, he, oh, frequents, he frequents Olive Garden. He loves Azupa. <laughs> okay, well, I can't blame a man for that. Okay, so Katrina remembers everything about everything. Like my life, everyone's <laughs> life. She knows She's things obsessed. she shouldn't know. <laughs> Probably Harry Potter as well. And then I am also like that, but pretty much only with Harry Potter. Everything else just whoof, out of my brain. So um, we're going to do a little trivia game. So here's, here's how we're doing it. Ready? Katrina has... Those are not every flavored beans. Those look like nerds. What are you talking about? They're not the Birdie Bots every flavor beans. Damn it. Yes, they are. Katrina. They're, not. They're the Bean Boozled ones. I bought them at Harry Potter World. They are the fucking. Uh, you went to Orlando? What? I think not. Hmm. 
I don't know what Did these are. Did you go are. to Orlando? We're going to pretend. No, we're, sorry, th- okay. we're going to pretend that these Bean Boozled are Birdie Bot's every flavor beans. Those are Kroger. I will say that they They're have not. They have a lot of different <laughs> Those flavors. Those are from Meyer. They have a lot of different flavors in here, and some are good, some are bad. Actually, this is really fun because for every color of jelly bean, there could be two possibilities. One that's good, one that's bad. For instance, this like light greenish one could either be juicy pear or booger. So here's what's going to go down. Okay. James is going to ask us some trivia questions from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, and whoever gets it right gets to pick out a jelly bean and have the person who gets it wrong eat it. How many jelly beans are there? So many. Okay, so you're both... Contains weird and wild flavors. All right, so potentially both of you will either have to eat one, not eat one, or one of you will have to eat one, right? We'll see. Sure. Okay. Hit us with it. All right, and I'm not sure how many questions there are. First question, when was Harry born? July 31st. But what year? Yeah, uh, it's in the 80s. 86. 89. Wrong, both of you. <gasps> 90? 80. 80? Oh. oh. But July 31st was correct. I got him confused with Taylor Swift's year. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right, so so you both so need a bean. We both eat one? All right, so we'll just pick one. Yep. Let's pick a, a color. So The next one's easy. All so right, you I'm going green, one. the one that I listed. So it's either booger or pear. <laughs> it's pear. <laughs> you know what? I honestly can't tell. <laughs> oh no! What did you get? Dirty dishwater. That's Ew. that's fitting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. The next one's easy. You'll chew those down. Where does the Dursley family live? Pivot. Pivot Drive. Drive. Ooh, Number but four. Did, but did you say pivot drive? She did. Because that is a wrong answer. Number four, pivot drive. Okay, but uh, in Friends, Little that would have been right. Surrey. All right, pick one out. I'm squeaking a lot over here. We weren't going to say anything, but yeah. All right, this is either old bandage or <laughs> pomegranate. Neither one sounds lovely. Uh, no. Um, okay. Oh. <laughs> it sounds like it's old bandage. Okay, next. Mm. Next question. The Dursley, we should have a uh, palate cleanser too uh, for you guys so you get the full experience of these. Mm. Um, That's okay. Cool. The Dursleys and Harry went to the zoo. In which part of the zoo did they see the snake? Reptile room. House. The reptile room. Is that room. seriously a question? It's Where kind of a, sh- lemony it's kind of a shitty <laughs> question. It's a series of unfortunate events. We it's can kind skip of a that bad one. Question. Skip that one. Go to a better okay. one. Um, oh, this is a good one, I think. But I'm not as uh, involved. Is it about owls? <laughs> ooh, ooh. Someone in the office is possessed by an owl. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, how did Hagrid spell birthday on the on Harry's cake? Oh, B I R T H D A E. Oh, you said D A E first. Wait, someone tell me what you said again. She just said D A E. That's not how you spell birthday. <laughs> it's not. That's true. I I took I copped out. Uh, what did you say? B I R T H D A E. Both correct. Well, okay, next one. Okay. The Dursleys told Harry his parents died in a... That's too easy. Car crash. Oh. (laughs) That's even... If I know it, that's too easy. Yeah. Who helped Harry figure out how to get onto the platform? Molly Weasley. She's right. Yeah. I did know that one, but my speed is not the same. Mm -mm. Give me one. How many times do we see Professor McGonagall as a cat? In the book or the movie? Uh, I'm gonna go. Once. I think it has to be the movie. I'm gonna go once, twice. In the beginning scene and, and in the middle, in the yeah. classroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you think? It it is twice, but I said once, wrongly at the beginning. Okay, what's the first spell cast by Hermione in the movie? For example, Oculus Reparo. Correct. Do you want to give me one of these? You've had like seven right while I've been. She's a just slow so poke. good at it. I know. Okay, this is either. Hmm. Okay, here. Dead How many fish or strawberry banana smoothie? Oh, oh one fuck. of those could be good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Dumbledore's Grundle, huh? Oh my god. Alas, like tuna. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, that's horrible. That is horrendous. Okay. <laughs> oh 
Okay, well, let's get you into this next question so you can experience more wonderful flavors. How many lines does Ginny have in the first film? One, and it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and so do all of her others. Sorry, Ginny. Sorry, well, Bonnie Wright. <laughs> that right. is one thing that I'm very excited about um, for the HBO series. I'm a little bit like, ah, oh, please don't ruin my world that I love so much, but I would love to see an authentic Ginny. All right, I am doing myself a salad here, and I'm either eating toothpaste or blueberry, or berry blue. Fuck yeah. Okay. Berry blue? Berry blue. Hell yeah. That's delicious. I want to eat one, too, because okay. I, I haven't had an opportunity. Okay. And just give me any one, and we can just, I get a shot here. Sure. Okay, this is either liver and onions or cappuccino. I hope it's liver. <laughs> And it is. <laughs> Tastes more like if you took a cigarette and burnt your grandmother's couch. Oh, and then licked it? Took all of it and put it in your mouth. I think I can smell it. <laughs> I don't know. That fish one was pretty bad too. This is this is uh this is illegal. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. Any others? <laughs> Do your hardest one. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was, I'm in my, never in my 23 years have I ever eaten anything that tasted like <laughs> the that. smell alone. <laughs> it's <God>. crazy. <laughs> okay. Hit us with your hardest. All the questions are crazy easy. Okay. Off the top of your head, give us one. Yeah, well, do you want to come up with a question? Yeah. Go for it. All right. Here's my question. Why does this wait on me? I don't know. This was your job. You you gave me this job 15 minutes before you picked me up. <laughs> Stop arguing, guys. Okay. <clears throat> I know one. Okay. What is the vault number that the Sorcerer's Stone is taken out of? 713. Yes, very Easy. good. And do you know the address to this place, Katrina? <sighs> okay, there is some debauchery afoot. You guys were giggling about that earlier, and then you just you knew what 713 was, and then you asked a question that was 713 related. Yes, okay, so it was planned. Before he even knew, though, we were in the car, we were picking him up, and I was like, fuck, what's the address again? And then I was like, oh, yeah. My address? No, no, no. Oh. This address. And I was like, oh, yeah, 713. And then I go, <gasps> To Katrina, as and if, I do this, and I was like seven thirteen, and she's just like, "It's five oh four. That was the time, and I was that like, was the time, and I had no idea what the fuck she was, was talking like, about. Never mind, I'm gonna say it later. <laughs> this uh, aftertaste is rough. Give me another <laughs> bean. <laughs> okay, so even if it's another bad one, that's yeah. What is this? What, what's the potential? Oh, okay. This one can either be booger or juicy pear. And I think we all did such a good job that there's one more surprise. Oh, it's booger. Oh. It's booger. Oh! Okay. We I'm all sorry. get one. Oh, sure. These are bag clips because I thought that they would be fun, that they were useful. He needs chip clips. I've been hounding him about we this. We all need chip clips. She's been welcome to the party. <laughs> well, I opened mine. It is worn up. Oh, this is the stupidest thing oh, I've ever seen. Clips. It says bag clip. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's a Katrina thing for sure. <laughs> and it comes with a blank card in case you want to re-gift it to someone Guys, else. Mine is the goblet of fire. <laughs> that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. I think I got. I thought this was Hades at first from yeah. Hercules. Why is Ron wearing? You guys, someone help me. Why is Ron wearing pink? Oh, because in the Goblet of Fire, he wears it to the ball. Are these all Goblet of Fire? Oh, I don't know. Guess what? Guess what? Pull the Katrina. Oh, we both got Ron. Oh, look at this stupid <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. This is fun, huh? This is so this is fun stuff. You know what? I like that one the best. For the, really? For the rest well, of the series, for the rest of the series, we're just gonna hang our little boys. Aww. Okay, right from here. Oh, no. I really wanted it to be a chip clip, and that's what I thought I was buying. So, 
Okay. Any lasting thoughts about the movie, the book? Just put that anywhere. Um, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think so. I, we didn't go into as much detail as we normally do because no, everyone knows about this everyone movie knows and this every, movie. and it was more about just how it culturally impact everything. Um, and I think there we've been talking about it. Uh, it range 20 years it's going to be made into an hbo show now there's a broadway play there's endless games podcasts anything uh, i think it- podcast <laughs> this movie could take five hours to discuss there's oh no, yeah there's no and shortage i will of take things. it this I is would part too. one i'm just kidding <laughs> I, I mean i'm not even nearly as interested in it as you and i could do it oh you know? yeah there's it's so just, much to it the yeah. set design i mean everything it's just So good. So I guess let us know in the comments anything that we missed, what your favorite parts are. Um, Yeah, anything Harry Potter. If you want us to keep doing more Harry Potter movies. Yeah, yeah. Any fun facts, any like, yeah, topics you'd like us to hit on, for sure let us know. Let us Um, know how fast you'd like Molly back on the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we didn't even say Molly's not here. She's been on set for something really cool. Um, Can't say what it is, but yeah, that's why James is, you know. I'm out, just filling in. Out in front of the camera. But it's okay, because she's team Twilight. So we yeah. made sure to stack the deck in our favor when we talked about Harry Potter. Yeah, we know what we're doing. We're taking a pretty aggressive stance here. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but like, There's how like can a lot not? of, it's like very polarizing between Twilight and it is. Harry yeah. Potter. Yeah, but there's a right side. I agree. <laughs> I mean, if I see one more sparkly asshole running around with a depressed look on his face, I'm pissed off about it. You know, I, I probably see it. wouldn't have said it in the same way, but I agree with that sentence. Even Rotten, Robert Pattinson was... Rotten Patterson? <laughs> <laughs> Who is he? No shade, no shade. Even Robert Pattinson was first a Potterhead yeah, before That's true, and he was Twilight. in one of these movies. He was? he was in both, that's why I'm saying. Yeah. He, he was, was wonderful first, in those movies. He was first in Harry Potter, then Twilight. So. Oh, really? That's what I just oh. said. So, um, lasting thoughts about the Harry Potter movie. Magical. I love it more than anything. Oh, Really? Wow. Yeah. Magical is a nice way to sum Yay. it up. I can't wait to start book two with you. We're reading the whole series because, yep. you know. Um, okay. She has a wonderful reading voice, and so it's very soothing to listen <laughs> to that. That's true. And we've listened to the Audible version, which is also good in its own right, but... Mm-hmm. I'm partial to this. Oh, thanks. Um, oh, oh. Okay. So, What'd oh, you God. eat now? On that note, can we hop into Confessions and Obsessions? Clearly, um, oh, that jelly bean is your obsession this week. Ladies and gentlemen. Get down. Say it. My obsession this week has been these healthy bagels that I was just telling you about. Yes. Um, so good. Of course, it's food related because it's me. But I saw them in Whole Foods in the freezer section yesterday. Um, and I'm probably going to have one tomorrow. And I had one this morning. I made a delicious sandwich out of it. 125 calories. Nope. 160. 160 calories with 25 grams of protein. What kind of bagel? It, this one was a plain, but they also have everything and I think cinnamon. But I didn't buy those. They're kind of expensive, but if you're watching what you're intaking in your macros, uh, highly rate it. I really want to try them. Is it of normal size or is it thin? Yeah, normal size. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that was her selling point Mm -hmm. on me. She was like, they are not bagel thins. No, they are not. Yeah, because that's how they'll get you sometimes. Right? Yeah. No, these are full full boys. And I will say that I read once that six pieces of toast worth of carbs are in one bagel. And I'm not sure the science on all that, but... Yeah, it is highest on the glycemic index. That looks pretty good, actually. Yeah, I don't know what you put in that, but egg Egg whites and cheese and mushrooms. Um, My obsession this week is also food related. I (laughs) spent hours recreating the Olive Garden Zuppa Toscana recipe, and holy shit, it was the best thing we have ever tasted, was it not? Hands down, the best soup I've ever had for sure. I mean, it's like I don't know if I guess you probably do, but. Do most people consider soup a comfort food? Yes. You think most yeah. people do? Oh, yeah. I know like mashed potatoes, I feel like, are a comfort food. Yeah. But, like, the soup Anything definitely. like hot and carby, but I feel like there's still something about soup. Like it can still be a healthy soup and still be comforting. Especially a hearty soup. I, yeah. yeah, but like a tomato bisque is not like a, as comforting, I oh, feel I like. Oh, I think it is. It's not for me, but I know it is for Rachel. I think oh, yeah. any soup. Okay. Well, regardless, <laughs> this is definitely the best <laughs> soup I've ever... ever- I think my obsession last week was also soup related. <laughs> this girl loves Love soup. soup. She's a soupy girl. Okay. Okay. What's your confession and or obsession this week? Um, my obsession is probably the soup. Also, honestly, 
It was really? so good. Yeah, 100%. Huh, yeah. Uh, we were well, like you know what? I'm going conf- to we- confess about something oh, okay. else, actually. We ate so much of the soup we were in pain. That's what I was going to say, but go ahead. Well, because we can, <laughs> we ate an entire loaf of French bread with the soup. No, we did not. I did. Okay. This mm. is where she finds out about it. Uh, my confession for the week is that I fed Ollie all kinds of chicken. And he loved it. He has a very sensitive tummy. It wasn't flavored. It was just chicken flavored, but he didn't. He appreciated it. I'm sure he did. <laughs> That's my confession. Can't wait to take him back to the vet. <laughs> <laughs> well, he had a great time. Actually, a little fun fact uh, for y'all. Tell um, him. Tell him. Ollie is two years old, and he's <laughs> getting his first haircut tomorrow, which I'm kind of, like, nervous about. He's Aww. so cute. He's adorable. He's kind of bald on his belly. He doesn't have a whole a lot of... Speckle belly boy? Yeah, he doesn't have a lot of fur, but it's getting really hot out, um, and he has yeah. a lot of hair around his neck that's getting really thick. If I <laughs> send mane. you if I send you a picture, will you put it in the podcast I was just going to say you I'll, should put a picture. I'll put a picture for There's you guys. There's a picture that I have of him sleeping on the bed with this exact Harry Potter book. Yeah, oh, yeah. Super cute. And he's, he's delightful. Yeah. He's wonderful. God, I can't wait to see him again. <laughs> he's just at home. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks guys so much for listening. Go ahead and follow us on Instagram at Millennial Drama Queen Pod and please rate and subscribe wherever you're listening. This podcast is brought to you by Mastermind Media.